you're an attorney. Yes. You've been a senior vice president of HR. Uh, you, were the C you're, you were the CEO of the Thurgood Marshall College Fund. You're on the board of the University of Miami. In terms of professional goals, where does being the CEO of SHRM rank for you? Number one, it's in some ways I feel like I, everything that I've done in my career was to prepare me for this job. And I know that may sound corny, but it's really, really what I believe. So I began my career, as you pointed out, as a lawyer. I then went into HR. But then I know I needed to understand and have a P&L uh, experience. I needed to understand why people matter. See, I kind of understood it as a lawyer, check, because we were responding to people-related problems. And then I began to understand reactionary, more reactionary in the HR practice, dealing day-to-day -day with people issues. But as a business person, someone who had P&L, who had to meet payroll, who had to deal, understand that we couldn't solve our organization's challenges but through people, I had a really different sense of the importance of HR, not just because I was an HR person, right? It's fascinating now to be in a position to help lead a profession that carries with it this much responsibility. In a knowledge-based economy, and, and when augmented reality and augmented intelligence and machine learning and AI and everything, everyone is talking about HR. And so to lead this, this is where I'm supposed to be. I'm really excited about it. And I think all of my past experiences have prepared me for this role. So why did you take the job? For all the reasons just I, just I described, this is there's a special moment in time right now, and there's some some real so so three things that specifically intrigue me. First of all, me too. At the end of the day, there's a big national, in fact, international discussion occurring about what HR could do, should do to improve the culture in organizations such that things like Me Too don't happen. And by the way, we're not limited to just sexual harassment. It's all workplace harassment. It's making sure that people can bring their best to work and be most effective and productive for the organization. So that was number one. Number two is we're at this special point where everyone, you know, CEOs used to always say people matter. You know, that's what everyone says. But interestingly now, in a knowledge-based economy, where everything is about the, the organization that has the smartest people, the people who run the fastest, the people who are most creative, innovative, they win, people really do matter. So it's for the first time that HR, that CEOs are not just saying people matter, they actually believe that. When you take large organizations like an Accenture, these personal services firms that have hundreds of thousands of employees, the only thing they sell are people. And so they have to get that right. So for that, that was the second reason why this job and the timing is perfect. And then thirdly, Sherm has had a wonderful 70 year run. Uh, but like every industry, if you don't innovate, if you don't uh, respond to changes occurring, you could go away. I started my career, corporate career at Blockbuster, a company that was Wall Street's darling and then eight years later didn't exist. So I've seen incredibly successful enterprises disappear. And so for those three reasons, the moment of people are talking about workplace, and I call that more of a focus on culture, the fact that people are talking about people, CEOs understand they can't do what they need to do without getting the people part right. And then thirdly, this disruption that's occurring in nearly every industry, but specifically around HR, says this is an opportunity for someone like me who likes to take on meaningful challenges to really step up and do the work that, that I've been prepared to do. So how ambitious is your first year agenda? Man, ambitious is an understatement. I have literally, I've been in the role now for about four months. I used to have the number of days, hours, and minutes, but um, I've visited uh, our Indian off our offices in India. Um, I've met with 122 employees personally. I've visited several chapters um, because what's interesting is I've been asked a number of times, what's your grand vision? for where Sherm's gonna be five years from now, what the profession's gonna be. And candidly, I'm in my looking and listening phase. I don't know, I don't have enough, I'm not so arrogant to think I have figured it all out in 120 days. What I'm trying to do is get out to people, not just HR people, but users, clients of our services to say, what could we do that one you will value and that we can actually do well? I'm trying to understand what it should be like. So the answer is, my gosh, I'm working like nothing. I mean, I'm literally clocking 70 hours a week, but I'm so energized by it because if you put in the time now, the next six months, by 
third quarter, we're going to be very clear about what our long-term vision is, third quarter of this year. But I'm going to spend these first six months looking, listening, and strategizing and coming up with the big plan. How frequently should Sherm's CEO be out visiting the chapters? Oh gosh, it, we are one of the things that distinguishes us from any other organization. There are for-profits who are doing this work. They're major um, high-end shops who do consulting around human capital. What distinguishes us from everyone is that we are a membership organization. We've got 85,000 members in our chapter structure. And so it's incredibly important for me not only to go to our super mega chapters, these are chapters with more than a thousand people, but I've got to go to the small chapters and have done it. I was in Albany, Georgia, meeting with a group of nine people at a very small chapter. And the temptation is send a staffer to go do those and I only go to the big stages. It is important for me to keep in mind that most companies are small and medium sized employers. So just going to the big companies or only going to the big chapters in the major cities some won't give me a full view of the work that we need to do and the challenges impacting our profession.